Hey guys, Jay Hoyt here. Before this video gets started, I just want to say thank you guys for helping me hit 200 subscribers here on YouTube. But the next goal is, of course, the next 100. 300 subscribers. So if you can help me hit that new goal of mine, I would greatly appreciate it. But the Call of Duty League is upon us. It's time for a full CDL preview. What's going on guys? Jay Hoyd back with you today. Welcome back to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This clip was taken from my live stream. Twitch.tv slash jhoyd74. Link down in my description. Uh, but like I said, this is the first day of league play and we had a pretty darn good map here. Uh, start off a little slow. We bring it back in the end. Uh, it was the first time playing Raid in uh, in League Play this year. So hope you guys do enjoy that in the background. As I said in the intro, it is the CDL Pro League, right? Today is the first day of the Pro League. And I have waited so long to make this video. And I'm just so excited to have this action, uh, you know, finally be around again because it's been way way too long so the way I did all of my previous videos was obviously I did one team I focused on one team what they did last year what I predict they're going to do this year you know old rosters new rosters overall predictions well we're not going to go super super in depth with this but I just want to give some general I guess thoughts some storylines some interesting things that have happened maybe since I've done those videos because I didn't go in order I just kind of went in a random order and uh, you know obviously some things have changed since then so I broke down the league into four tiers I have one through four I have teams that uh, in tier one that are gonna be uh, pretty much favorites at every single event that uh, I could see definitely winning all if not majority of their matches tier two that I can consider to be like in contention but may fall short but they have a good chance at upsetting those top teams tier three teams that I kind of think are on the edge of contending but maybe not there just yet or maybe just you know up from the bottom that they're starting to look a little decent but maybe not at that step just no, yet it? it's good so and of course our tier four teams the bottom of the league that I don't know what they're doing, but they need to do something different that uh, I don't really have any hope for. So hopefully those four uh, tiers will uh, will help with this series, or not series, but with this video. Uh, but let's get right into it. Let's start with tier four. We'll work our way up here. So out of the four teams, or I should say three teams in tier four, the first team I have is the Toronto Ultron. This isn't really in a in a in a list per se, but they're just kind of there. Uh, but Toronto Ultra. They haven't really looked too great so far. I mean, they have had a couple of moments, but, like, I haven't really seen uh, too much from them. So, I didn't really feel comfortable putting them in Tier 1. Definitely not, or definitely not Tier 1 or 2. I thought about putting them in Tier 3, but I was like, you know what? Other teams have kind of looked, uh, you know, better than them so far. So, I put these guys down in Tier 4. Second in Tier 4, I have the Paris Legion. Now, although they did beat London at the kickoff classic, I still have no faith in this team, right? I, I know some teams were putting them in like that tier three, the, you know, on like you know, decent teams, but I still have no idea. Like, I don't know what to think about this team, but just so far, I don't have any faith in this team. Uh, like I said, despite beating London at the kickoff classic. Our third and final team in tier four is the Seattle Surge. Now, Josh, why do you have Seattle so low? Well, these guys have looked terrible. And I mean terrible so far. I don't know what it is with this team this year. With the likes of Octane, Gunless, Pristini, and Looney. I don't understand how these four players are doing bad right Looney has always been a really good 4v4 player he's getting older but still he's always been pretty good and the other three are still like in their prime still really good and definitely all have something to show this year I mean Pristini probably the least out of the four but I mean Octane had a really bad year last year because he had no help 
Uh, Gunless had some internal problems with Chicago. He got moved to the bench, so he didn't play for uh, for half the year. Uh, Pristini, you know, joins from Florida to Chicago, and uh, he looked really good, but they didn't really have you know consistency there. And then Looney didn't really do well last year either. I think got put on the bench for a while and uh, brought back in at some point. I think so. I don't know what this team needs to do. A lot of people are saying Looney needs to be replaced. Uh, get something that, or get someone that plays a little faster pace. Maybe a young gun. Maybe uh, you know someone that's in the amateur scene that's not necessarily a young gun, but you know maybe a, a veteran. That uh, I, just I don't know. They need to fix whatever they're doing because right now they suck. But moving up to tier three, we got the London Royal Ravens. So uh, before this season, I actually had this team ranked kind of high, uh, potentially in that top six. Uh, but unfortunately, due to some travel restrictions, Zero right now is stuck in the UK. And during the rules that you have to be all in one facility, they can't do that. So they had to go to the free agent market. And they picked up former Call of Duty world champion Parasite. Now, there's a huge question mark around this team, right? I mean, the London team, as in general, will look to be a solid team. But now they're playing without Zero, the team, you know, the team that they've been practicing with. And they pick up Parasite. Now, Parasite was a proven winner back in the day, but due to his, um, I don't want to say personality, but due to whatever around him, he hasn't been the greatest teammate. He's always been a good player, but not necessarily the best teammate. So a lot of people don't want a team with him. And I think very rarely is he on a team for longer than just say six months. And uh, I don't know. So this is his big chance. I would say this is probably his last chance at the league. Um, if he doesn't make it, if he doesn't make himself look good now, he will never be in the league again. I could, I could almost guarantee that because this is basically his last chance, right? He's already getting older. You know, he's already burned a lot of bridges. I don't see him coming back in the league in any way, shape, or form unless it's in a substitute role or temporary sub or stand-in. So there's a big question mark around this team still. The second team that had to make a roster change, or uh, I should say unfortunate roster change, is the New York Subliners which is our next team. Zuma, one of the, the class acts of the league, uh, had to retire, unfortunately. Medical reasons. Uh, I think he said he had some like fatigue in his thumb or, or in his hand or wrist or something. Uh, I, I watched it a while ago, I don't remember. But um, they call up Diamond Con from their academy roster. But, uh, of course, they just happened, like, right before the kickoff classic. So, or was it right before or right after the kickoff? I don't remember now. But uh, they just, you know, they, it was right before the, the kickoff classic. It was like a week before and uh, obviously, it's still really early to tell. Uh, I haven't really seen much from them. And then a lot of teams don't uh, stream their scrims. So it's hard to kind of keep track of them. But uh, I have to put them down in Tier 3 right now because it's just way too early to tell. And our third and final team in Tier 3 is the LA Gorillas. Now, this team I would have normally put in Tier 4 at the bottom of the league. But this team has actually been kind of impressing so far. They've actually been playing pretty good. And... I don't know. Maybe it's the it's a time that they're going to show us what they're made of, and and maybe they'll look better than most people think. Because originally I didn't have these guys doing well at all, but if they keep playing like this, these guys might have a chance uh, at being in that top nine spots. Now that half of the teams are done, we got to get into our top six teams, starting with the LA Thieves. So this team I had ranked as my top fourth or my fourth overall team. In the league, but at the kickoff classic, they didn't really look too good. Optic literally just swept them, destroyed them, and made them look like they were such a lesser team that we're gonna put these guys down in tier two. But they have all the potential in the world, and these guys definitely could uh, could look good potentially breaking a top tier. But uh, maybe that top tier will uh, will grow a little bit bigger. Maybe expand to four teams. Maybe we'll go down to three tiers, four per tier, maybe. But uh, like I said, this team has lots of potential. They're still really good on paper. You know, obviously it wasn't really a big event. It wasn't really, uh, you know, much to show. But uh, they still looked relatively okay. They've still looked good since then. So uh, although they're not in Tier 1, they're still in the top of the league. Our second team in Tier 2 is the Minnesota Rocker. Uh, so this team, like I said, has been a solid team. Like like I also said in their, uh, in their preview, uh, that this team is definitely a dark horse team that definitely has the potential... Of upsetting the top teams uh, they won 3-2 at the uh, kickoff classic versus Toronto but um, a lot of teams went three or three uh, game five that's what I wanted to say uh, 
But this team, like I said, has tons of potential, but we'll have to wait and see, you know, once we get into the official matches, how they play versus all the team. And our last team in tier two is the Florida Mutineers. Now, although this team is one of the other few teams that had to make a, not had to, but did make a roster change, um, they swapped out Havoc for Neptune. I don't know why. Maybe they just didn't think their practice was going well, or maybe it's because of um, location issues or travel issues. Uh, I don't know, but uh, they did that, you know, roster change, and we'll see how it uh, how it goes from there. But this team last year was really, con or you know, really good at certain times, but they couldn't find consistency along the entire league. So they picked up slack in the off season to help with that uh, consistency issue. And uh, this team, just like Minnesota and LA, this team definitely has a chance to be an upset. We're down to three teams, and it's probably no surprise of who's here. Let's start with the Dallas Empire. So this team has looked like the best team in the game so far. They 3-0 New York at the kickoff classic, but again, they just played with a brand new roster. So not really much to, to take from that matchup. Uh, obviously, Dallas has been the same team. Uh, since last year, basically minus Clayster, he moves over to that New York squad. But they've looked at the best team, no question about it so far. But there's still two teams that could compete for a title. The first one of those two teams is going to be the Atlanta Phase. Now this team, like I said in the in their preview, they look incredible on paper. They got even better from last year. They lost versus Florida in the kickoff classic in a game five. But I still think this team has looked really solid so far. And I definitely don't want to be like, oh, they lost the kickoff classic. So let's put them down a little bit. No, this team's solid. They're going to be up there all year long. And um, I think they're really in close contention with our next team. So our last team in tier one, of course, home and native, Optic Chicago. This team has looked really, really solid. Obviously, the team that I follow the most and support the most, uh, but they've looked really solid. I mean, they've had a couple of maps here and there. You can definitely tell some of their weak maps, but uh, they looked really solid. They 3 out LA Thieves at the kickoff classic. They've played Atlanta Phase and beat them majority of the time. Uh, they've looked really solid, and I'd probably put them as number two in the league right now behind Dallas since they've uh, since Optic has been struggling with, uh, with Dallas that... I think we have a, a really good year upon us, but I hope that Optic can bring home some trophies. But let me know, guys, what are your preseason standings here? You know, as we enter in the league tonight, I think it kicks off at what, like three or four or five, something like that. But um, let me know your your preseason, uh, your picks, your your teams, who's doing well, who's not. Let me know all of your thoughts and comments down below in that comment section. If you haven't yet, or if you're brand new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn those notifications on so you never miss an upload. But with all that being said, guys, see you in the next one. In the